My name is Heidi Castaneda, and I'm an associate professor in the Department of Anthropology here at USF Tampa. Well, in addition to being graduate uh, program director, which involves a number of administrative activities, um, I'm teaching and uh, researching on topics related to medical anthropology and migrant health. I think there's a very interesting intersection between what happens in immigration policy and healthcare access, and so that's an area that I've really been, you know, very um, dedicated to researching further and seeing how these policies impact families and communities here in the United States and I've also worked in Germany quite extensively and um, currently I'm also working in Mexico. Some of my research has focused specifically on women's health issues but more broadly it's looking at healthcare access. Um, this is something that particularly influences women's health because women's health uh, initiatives are often coupled with other um, initiatives in healthcare policy. So we see, for example, we've been seeing a decline in women's health reproductive services at the same time as we're seeing a shift into um, new forms of health care access in the United States. And so women's health is particularly impacted by the current intersection of health care policies. Well, so health care access affects everybody. Um, when people don't have access, then it, it can overburden emergency rooms, for example. It can make entire you know, populations less, less able to work and raise their children and perform well in school. So I think it's important that we don't limit our focus in migrant health simply on the migrant person themselves, but look at the larger family setting, which often includes U.S. citizens and the communities in which they live, such as the one here in Tampa Bay. For many of the women in my studies, they're making health care decisions for the entire family. And especially in the case of immigrant families, about 70% of children in these families are U.S. citizens. And so what was once an immigration or an immigrant health issue actually affects a larger population than simply immigrants themselves. Because especially in mixed status families, you have U.S. citizen children who are impacted by health-seeking behaviors or restrictions to healthcare access that the entire family experiences. So with this award, I'm going to be expanding the research that I'm currently doing on migration and health, but I'm also looking at a, a new trend, which is the expanding educational opportunities for second-generation migrant youth, especially those who are dreamers who came to this country as very young children. And what we're seeing is that they're experiencing rapidly expanding opportunities, not only in college, but also within their families and within their communities. And so not just going to college, but now they're going to graduate school, now they're becoming professionals, now they're becoming faculty themselves. And so the impact on um, higher education is really the focus of the project that I'm going to be using the award funds for. Well, I think it's important to realize that very small amounts of support actually can have a big impact on research. For example, in my own research, my primary expenses are hiring graduate assistants or travel, and those really are minimal expenses in some cases and can really have a big impact um, on a scholarship. In addition, I would say that uh, the mentorship of uh, women faculty is a really important piece of the WLP award. It allows us to create a cohort of women who are in the same stages of our careers and who can support each other on campus. And so there's the, the financial support, but I think also um, having um, mentorship opportunities with other faculty members and with peers in our same cohort. Mm -hmm. Well, applied anthropology as a field is really important because it allows us to apply social theories and methods to actual social problems. And um, in the case of applied anthropology, we have the ability to bring the voices of women and the voices of the communities to the forefront of these conversations about healthcare access, about immigration, um, as well as the voices of the providers. We, we don't just study the affected patients, but also the healthcare workers who are on the front lines with, of these issues. And so the, Applied anthropology allows us to bring those voices to the forefront.